Okay. In this story, it's a, uh, this has to do with a common theme in the legal profession. And in this case, it's an Oregon lawyer who was slapped with a $2,000 fine for AI errors. And so uh, the story goes, this is from the Oregonian, Oregonian. An Oregon attorney accused of relying on the totally plausible and often totally erroneous, and these are, once again, it's another product with uh, M dashes in it. Output of so-called artificial intelligence was slapped with a fine by the Oregon Court of Appeals on Wednesday. The appellate court determined that Portland civil attorney Gabriel Watson filed briefs citing two made-up cases and used a fabricated quote that was attributed to a real piece of case law. And the first for Oregon... The Courts of Appeals ordered Watson to pay $2,000 to the State Judicial Department, charging him $500 for each baloney citation and $1,000 for the bogus quote. Although our, um, quote, or although artificial intelligence programs may seem to offer a shortcut for a busy attorney in an individual case, at present, they may create a long cut to justice, Chief Judge Aaron Legison wrote, calling it a very grave situation. The errors were discovered by Watson's legal opponent, former state lawmaker and retired attorney Charles Ringo. Um, before I go on, there are a number of things that I've said in the past in other videos, but the thing that upsets me the most about this is you have so many things going on in the legal profession now and, and uh, in the justice system period with lawfare and the use of lawsuits, the use of prosecutions and basically the use of the law in order to hurt a political opponent, to um, stymie a political opponent. And there hasn't been anyone so far that has been held accountable. Then you see this. You see how these people are now being punished and fined because they're using AI to research case law. and. I guess what's irritating to me about this is the people who abuse the law, lawyers, prosecutors, etc., are not held accountable, but all of a sudden they're being held accountable here. Now, they should be. They should be held accountable, but they should be held accountable in other situations too. So for me, this is kind of evidence that we don't have a justice system in this country. And it's also very concerning that after all of this time utilizing AI, if you're an attorney and you're researching case law with AI and you don't know that this is an issue and you're not checking the case law that AI is researching, you could simply go back and ask it to, okay, reference where you pulled this information from, go to the official site pull up the case law and make sure that the case law is correct. If you're not doing that, you know, that, that in and of itself is just a, just doesn't make sense to me how you still have a law license. Ringo representing himself sued architectural engineer. So wait a minute. Okay. So this guy's a, a, a retired attorney that found this out. So he was defending himself. He sued an architectural designer, Jennifer, Cohoon in 2023, claiming her firm had created faulty plans for remodeling a duplex he owns in Bend. An arbitrator sided with Cohoon in January and ordered Ringo, Ringo to pay $1,200 plus $15,000 in fees to Watson, her attorney. Ringo appealed the case 
went haywire in May. Then when Watson filed the bunk, uh, wait, hold on, wait, Ringo appealed the, ca the case. Okay. So this is the problem with uh, AI written articles. Ringo appealed and the case went haywire in May when Watson filed the bunk filled brief with the appellate court. Know what kind of sentence that is. But anyway, Ringo said he spent several hours chewing over Watson's document, eventually making a trip to the Ben Library to check legal databases, which is what the original attorney should have done, and confirm his suspicions that Watson's arguments were bolstered by fake decisions in prior cases that never happened. Quote, I had to consider whether maybe there was just an innocent mistake in terms of the name of the case or the case citation numbers, he said. You have to check all sorts of variations to make sure that no, this just doesn't exist. So this guy, who's a retired lawmaker and a retired lawyer, went to the library of all places, not even on the internet, went to the library to search his case law and found that the other attorney just pulled it out of nowhere from the AI. Watson, for his part, tried to explain the error by saying that his assistant had mistakenly filed a, quote, draft slash placeholder brief. He later acknowledged and apologized for the apparently AI-generated errors asking the court not to sanction him. So he lied, asked him, told him, okay, yeah, you're right, AI, I'm screwed up, AI did this, and then asked the court not to sanction him. Quote, as a solo practitioner with a heavy caseload and a desire to fight for justice for all clients, there is an inherent risk of becoming overwhelmed, he wrote in his defense. The temp temptation of relying on technology to support these well-intentioned goals is strong. But the court had none of it. It's amazing how the court actually stood up for justice this time. Lagason, the judge, said Watson hadn't provided a clear explanation of how the error occurred and that each false brief created by AI cost the judicial system time and money untangling the mix-up. Well, I don't think that's just the only thing. What if Ringo, the, the guy that had, who felt that he had been wronged, what if he lost the case because nobody actually looked into it? It's one thing that the court or the ju judicial system itself loses time and money, but what about people who are harmed by others and are looking for compensation as a result of that. Legal precedent is the backbone of the law, Lagason said, but artificial intelligence is a machine built on the probable order of words, not the truth itself. AI mistakes are sometimes dubbed hallucinations, but Lagason rejected that term. Now, hallucinations has, happens to be the term used by many people in the in, the, in these legal issues. But I guess this particular judge thinks she knows better. Artificial intelligence is not perceiving non-existent law as a result of a disorder, she wrote. Rather, it is generating non-existent law in accordance with its design. I don't know how you can say that. I think what's happening is programming and things like that. I don't think anyone is specifically designing AI to hallucinate a case or case law. This is, again, the problem with the law, judges, prosecutors, the justice system as a whole, is that people like this just aren't qualified to be judges and lawyers. Watson didn't respond to requests for comment, Cohoon learned about the matter from a reporter and declined to comment. Oregon federal judges have encountered AI errors in at least two cases so far, the Oregon, uh, Oregonian previously reported. U.S. District Judge 
Michael Simon declined to impose sanction against attorneys for Green Building Initiative on November 12th, ruling that he was satisfied with the remedial actions already taken. So this is this has happened definitely happened before in Oregon and has happened in other cases where these so-called hallucinations have been used by lawyers using AI to cite case law. And I believe, although I'm not an attorney, that it's easy to remedy. Like I said before, if you're searching case law, this is meant to be a research tool, AI is. It's not meant to be a paralegal. And so it's easy enough to check what the AI pulls up, and people don't do that. They just blindly trust it. And that's the problem right now uh, in a lot of industries is that this stuff gets a lot of things wrong. And you have to double check it, especially if you're a lawyer. I mean, can you imagine if you're a doctor and you're just like, oh, here's a procedure. I'm just going to look it up and do it. You know, that, I mean, it's crazy. And then having a lawyer, you're defending, if they're prosecuting someone, they're, you know, there's a, somebody's life is on the line, money is on the line, reputations are on the line. And this is the problem with AI. It's not the AI itself. It's the people using it. It's the laziness of the people that use, use it. So let me know what you think. Uh, should there be more sanctions? Should people in these cases have more than just a fine? Should they have their license suspended? Should they have their license revoked? And what do you think about lawyers that, that do this kind of thing that are too lazy to just, not, not a problem with using AI, but not double checking it and checking the information that comes back from the, uh, from, from the AI itself. Let me know what you have to say in the comment section.